Yeah, so things like 1073s, LA-2As, 1176s, the uh, the SSL consoles, I mean, all that stuff, you built up uh, a knowledge and an experience with these products that later on would tie into your universal audio experience, which we'll we'll get to that, but uh, kind of built up your... And it was my, um, you know, with Teddy, the great thing from Teddy is coming from like, you know, sort of being a you know, a not pro, you know, a novice producer and, and working with equipment that you bought, you know, at some, some movie, uh, music store to work, going into a pro studio. You started getting, that was my first education with real, you know, real high end gear. And then moving to New York, that was like the everyday now, like the everyday was like, I'm sitting here with all this gear and it's like, Oh, it, you know, I got to learn how to use everything, you know? Yep. And so from there, you you know you worked you spent all pretty much the rest of the nineties working in New York right yep yep, yep. and then did this record called the Miseducation of Lauren Hill and that just a just a that a, just a little everything. hit yeah <laughs> that's what it changed everything yes it did yeah um, yeah. and then but then from there you made a drastic move and you came west and what prompted you to come west it was um, for music production I would say after Lauren Hill um, and a lot of people know about this I. You know, I needed to learn more about the business. There was a lot of stuff that went down with the business of that album. I, I, I really felt the need to really learn and understand the business from the other side of it. So I, so I started working at Warner Brother Records and um, under this amazing producer that I uh, still to this day is like a mentor to me, David Kahn. Um, he's like Sublime and uh, all these great Fishbone and all these amazing Paul McCartney and all these amazing yeah. people he's produced. But um. I always call David a nerd genius because he's just so fascinated by gear and equipment and study. So like working him under him as an A&R and he's, you know, like the head of A&R is also a producer. So it was literally like going back to college again, you know, once again. So I, so I worked at Warner brothers and then during this time, the most randomest thing happened. I had the opportunity to score a film and you talk about having no idea what I'm doing, which what I was doing. I had no idea what I was doing, and um, I scored this film. Um, you always say yes. Yes. Can you, just, you do this? Yes. Yes. You know, and literally was sitting there with pictures and, and <laughs> like, okay, you know, but miraculously, I scored this film. So I started developing this interest in scoring films and just wanted to learn more about it. So I started researching composers, and just one day I just showed up on Hans Zimmer's doorstep. You know, which is a fantastic visual. Just walking literally down to Hans Zimmer's place and knocking on the door. Literally, that's pretty much literally what happened. And they're like, oh, "What do you want?" You know, yeah, I see. Yeah, I, I want to see Hans. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine, you know. <laughs> so after, but the only thing I think that you know, coming off the success of the Lauren album and having a Grammy for you know album of the year is what got me in the door. You know, because I didn't have any classical training. I didn't have any. You know. I just had, I think, desire and, and a work ethic. And I think he appreciated that, you know, and he let me in. And so then I ended up, um, you know, I ne- basically never went home. Um, I went corporate housing. Uh, I stayed in corporate housing and then moved my family out. And basically never went back. Left my house, everything, and just <laughs> moved out to California. And at, at Hans's facility, I mean, it's they're doing stuff. It's like constantly things are being done. People yeah. are going from room to room, jumping in on things. You had mentioned that you would literally get called in to have somebody, hey, can you help me with this? Or I'm having yeah. trouble doing this. And people would kind of cross pollinate between rooms and projects. Yeah, it was a different world for me because, you know, the composing world and the, and the music production world are two different, you know, things. Um, and I had never been in an environment like that where you have this, 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 uh, multitude of, of studios right there. So literally in one room, this guy's doing, you know, Harry's doing Shrek and you walk in another room, somebody's doing this and somebody's doing that. And it's like a really amazing experience to like, unlike no other that I've ever experienced. And the great thing about them is they all work differently. You know, they have things in common because they, they, they collaborate and they work on things together, but then they all have their own techniques. And then you're just soaking up information, you know, you're just like, and they're, and they're curious about how I work too. So it was great. They'd come in and be like, so what's that thing? And I'd be like, MPC. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you know, why you got, yeah. all, you know, why you got all those records? Mm-hmm. I was like, well, where do you get drums from? You know, <laughs> you know, and it was, yeah. so it was like, it was a real give, you know, give and take, you know, so it was, it was, a, it was a great, and, you know, a lot of Germans and a lot of, you know, <laughs> you know so they, they drank a lot of red wine when I drink Heineken. So, you know, that kind of thing was like, 
definitely mixes it up a little yeah. there, right? Yeah. So. so you were there for for the first part of the two thousands, yeah, right? Yeah, first out of the two thousands, a good two three years, mm -hmm. and then I think I really started getting the itch um, for back to, for serious music production, just to back kind of yeah. to like what I do and my roots. And then came the next big um, turn, which was connecting with yeah, and then with I, Dre. Yeah. Then I met this guy out here, these West Coast guys know him, this guy, Dr. Dre. And, and um, I had never let, at that particular time in my career, had never met that level of perfectionist. It's like unwavering, you know, perfectionistism in terms of just getting the song right to the best of it. To, you know, he would exhaust, you know, I mean, literally, it could be three in the morning, he'd be like, I need African drums, Jay. <laughs> And so I'd pull up some, you know, some samples or something yeah. that I might have had from Hans or something. He'd be like, no, I need an African drummer. Oh, I'd be like, it's three in the morning. He'd be like, make it happen, make it happen. 